Now, if you look at the health sector mm. in general, accessibility to health, in the, this government's bid to make health service accessible, mm. we tried as much as possible to expand the health facilities that we have. Sure. There are cases where somebody will be sick and they would have to carry him through five miles, uh, not on even good roads, mm. till they get to the health center. Mm. And sometimes we happen to lose those people. Mm. We also have cases whereby uh, pregnant women are in labor and um, they don't have hospitals to attend. Mm. So as part of the Better Ghana agenda, mm. as part of our manifesto promises, mm. we promise to build a lot of health centers, hospitals, and so on. Mm. And true to the promise that we made to the people of Ghana, three years down the line, we built so many hospitals, we've improved all the regional hospitals, added so many structures, made two of them teaching hospitals. Yeah. The, the Tamale Hospital mm. is now a teaching hospital. Okay. The Cape Coast uh, Hospital, Regional Hospital, is now a teaching hospital. Okay. I had the opportunity to be in Cape Coast just this Saturday, yeah. and I saw the teaching hospital, and I was marveled. You know the opposition has two messages. If it's not Woyome, it's National Health Insurance mm. Scheme. In their time, how many people were on the scheme? Mm -hmm. The scheme has grown, and as at today, we have 17.5 million people on the scheme. Mm. Now they should come back with data. Mm. That is about half of the population. Yes. Yeah. No, more than half. Yeah, more than half of the population. If we are 24 we are million, million yeah. and we have 17.5. Yeah. That's more than half of the population. The, the rapid growth. Yeah. This is really a better Ghana. Mm. Mm. This is, I would keep ending everything with one per win, mm. now per day. Mm. I mean, the figures are there. Mm. Go back to your time, 2008, how many people were on the scheme? Yeah. And come back to 2011. And they should stop using the national health as a propaganda tool or as a campaign message. The scheme is working and we have increased the numbers. Okay, you're welcome back. Now we are going to start the discussion. And let me begin with you, um, uh, Richard. Um, first of all, let me find out your impressions about the State of the Nation's address as was given by the president last week. I think uh, the president's State of the Nation can be bottled in about four or five ways. It was uninspiring. It was nothing like vision. Uh, it could not address the teeming problem that Ghanaians are being faced with on a daily basis. The president could not touch on the key importance of the economy, unemployment, and the, even the most important aspect of his own promise. When I talk about the one-time premium payment, which the president promised us on several occasions and spoke about the fact that he's going to make it come to fruition. So even you're looking at the fact that the president has barely nine months to exit office, and this thing has not been touched on, and he escaped it. And at least the, the, the one thing that people also wanted the president to touch on was one of the most serious uh, injustice that has been done to Ghanaians and the good people of this country, especially the taxpayers, regarding the huge sums of money that have been paid to what you made to go and uh, just spent. Those issues were not touched on by the president. And other serious, important issues that people wanted the president to talk about. People also wanted to know what sort of employment avenues or opportunities that the president has provided for the good people. To talk about the phantom job that uh, my friend Okujato spoke about, that 1.6 million jobs have been created. People wanted to know where those jobs are. And no other important issues that people wanted the president to talk about. But I like everybody was expecting the president to do. He did not disappoint most people because, indeed, he has never been able to live up to the bill when it comes to talking about the problems that are being faced with the state and also okay. giving Ghanaians the accurate information and figure. Because, indeed, when you look at the state of the nation, there were a lot of things that the president said that were uh, to be charitable to, to the president, I would say, was untrue. Okay. We'll, we'll probably get time to go a bit into details of that. But then now let's talk about the health sector in particular. What, what were the shortcomings or otherwise that you think the president didn't touch on as far as health was concerned? My brother, when you look at the health sector, uh, there are a lot of things that indeed people wanted to know. Because you know that what Ghanaians are really concerned about where to sleep, what to eat on a daily basis, that is to talk about food, and also their health. Mm -hmm. These are some of the very important things that Ghanaians are much, much concerned about. So when the president gives a promise, because indeed, and talks about the fact that he's going to bring one-time premium payment, because we know that Kufa administration brought the health insurance. 
we brought it and also brought all that. Started implementation. We started implementation and all that. So if the president wanted to upgrade it, we're expecting that, okay, yeah, it, it claims that you're going to make it one time premium payment. Mm -hmm. You pay once and that's it. If the president made some, some of these commitments to the good people of this nation and is not able to fulfill, that is a serious thing. Because indeed, there's one thing that Ghanaians can take from the president. We know that in life, the more you honor your promises, the more valuable they become. If the president tells you A today and he's doing B, then it presupposes that the person does not honor his own promises that he made to Ghanaians. He told us that he's going to give us one time a uh, single payment. And has it happened? Um, let me throw that to you, Wanda. What happened to the one time premium? First and foremost, I, I think that the MPP has the penchant for not reading what is available. They have always created the impression that they, they, they wanted to run with what they want to run with. But we don't rule, we don't run a country that way. It is obvious, it's clear. If you take the 2012 budget, which was presented in November, the president actually stated clearly on the one-time premium that funds are far advanced. We are consulting the necessary bodies, we are putting the, the necessary you know, legislation together. You have to understand that these things come from at least from cabinet level. It must be considered, it must be taken care of before it gets to parliament. And so to create the impression that nothing is being done is unfortunate. However, you also That's agree hilarious. with me that there's a four-year mandate that has been given to the president. If um, what happened in the 10 years anything to go by, they had promised Ghanaians that when they come, they were going to review sal salaries. It took them eight years. And even in the eight years, they just passed it three days after they left office. No, a day after. President Gufo signed that into law on, on the set of, uh, um, set of January 2009. And then the following day, he was handed over. And so he shouldn't create the impression as if these are things that could have been done earlier. Even mm -hmm. if it was supposed but to have been done earlier, there are processes that lead to some of those decisions. And those processes have been considered. But then the, the, the one-time premium, as rightly said, was mentioned in the budget. I don't remember the capitation for the NHI has been mentioned in there, but at least we, we are told of plans to start a pilot, which has actually now uh, been, has become a matter that the pharmaceutical council has filed a suit against in court. Yeah. So if at least the um, capitation of the NHI has been piloted, well, wh why can't we start same for the uh, one-time premium? Well, let me, in fact, before I get to your question, let me just get to the background of that issue. Mm. You will realize, Briefly. yeah, you will realize that even in the president's State of Nations address, he did indicate clearly that there are funding challenges for the NHIS, mm -hmm. and we should looking for alternative ways of funding the NHIS. If not, we're going to collapse the, 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 the NHIS. At the time when he started in 2005, um, we had only about, um, if I'm not mistaken, 600,000, like the president said, 600,000. Um, people on the NHIS. As we speak, in 2011, we have 17.5 million people. That's a lot. Mm. So the financial burden alone is something that should have been taken care of before we do anything, you know, untoward. Now, you also observe, for instance, in the case of the National Youth Employment, part of the challenges we have along the line was because we didn't secure a very permanent and viable source of funding for the National Youth Employment. And we suffered the consequence later in the years. And I know President Mills, as somebody who is conscious of the steps he takes, he is not willing to take a step just because he's populist, just because to win him votes, just because um, the majority of Ghanaians will clap for him. But he's taking a step that will make sure that we don't, at the end of the day, run this country down. Because the future generations of this country would have to come and enjoy from some of this kitty. And this kitty must be put in the right perspective. I understand so, the MPP when they, when, when they go on the issue of we promise a one-time premium. Has, the question is, has President Moose ended his tenure as president for, the, for this term? But no. Then, uh, but we then there's a concern also justified that the concern is justified. It is indeed justified. No, it is indeed justified. But you have to agree that it is not according to the MPP's timetable. It is according to the no, president. Not, not only the MPP. I mean, Ghanaians in general want to know what happens to it. I hope you agree with me that it's better late than never. Better late than never. We have 10 solid months to go. That's the question. That's the issue. And, and I think people should be honest and, and bear with the president that when he says he's taking the right steps to implement the national health insurance, he, he's indeed doing that. Now, look, look, look at the way we have traversed. For the three years the president has been in power, at least five regional hospitals are coming up. Five district and regional hospitals. About five of them are in the Upper West region alone. And then you think that that is not a development in the, in, 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 in the health sector. 160 ambulances 
are yet to be procured in this, in this year alone. You have to understand that the dynamics of health service or health service de delivery is not only in coming to hospital free. The drugs, even the procurement of the drugs, where are the sources of our drugs? Where are the sources of our, uh, uh, the health personnel, for instance, the doctors, those who are going to be trained? You can see that they are conscious steps. For instance, this year alone, we are told that Cuba is going to give us 300 instead of the 250 or the 200 that we've been enjoying all these years. So these okay, are all sir, steps. I'm coming. Not. These are all steps. Is, hold on. I, I hold on. These are all steps in developing the health sector. It okay. is not only so, about the premium being one term or being twice a year or being every other month good, or being every the, other the year. The question on the table is, yeah. what happened to the premium, the one-time premium promise? I, I, um, is, it, is it also it, going to be piloted or is it going to be rolled out in full at least before the term ends? I, I can assure December? you that once the president has made his commitment to that, I, I can't speak for the president though, but I still believe, you and I believe in, his, in the confidence of the president and his character so far, that once he has stated that and he says plans are far advanced, Please, December 27 is about 10 or 8, 9 months away. And a lot can happen, even overnight. Okay. Um, Richard. Plans are far advanced is not a project. Neither is it something that will resolve the health needs of Ghanaians. Ghanaians want solution, realistic solution. Do you understand me? Touchable solutions. Something feasible, something people can lay their hands on. Practicable solutions. That's what Ghanaians are looking for. That's why they voted for President Mills. They wanted solution. They didn't want people who would come and tell them like plans are far advanced and all that. Those things will not resolve their health needs. That's why Ghanaians voted but for the president. If, My brother, let, let, let me come. I'll come to, I'm coming. You see, it's quite funny. Mm. We are told that the president will do that on his own time. Do you understand that? Like he did pay Wyoming in his own time. That is what we have been told. Do you understand that? If Ghana... We are doing to because of financial and other difficulties. That is why these things have not come to fruition. But we had money, enough money, to pay Wyoming for no work done. Do you know the number of people who could have gotten health, free health from that money? Do you know that that 580 billion could give secondary school students free education for 10 years? OK, we need to now go I'm talking about it. No, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming in. You mm -hmm. see, what we need to appreciate is that. People talk about the, the president has built this, he has built that, he, has, he made promises to people. He can be judged based on those promises that he made to them. They understand that? If at the end the president has not honored a single one of them, what can we say? They understand okay. that? Indeed, he talk about uh, uh, this health insurance, it's, it's nothing to write home about. People go to hospitals and they are turned away. We know, at least if you don't know, my, my brother, I know you heard of Legon Hospital, just in Accra here. Not to talk about the villages and other districts. People go with health insurance and they have been turned away. Confanochi, let's see the, the, the confusion happening at the uh, this in Kualibu. Can we call this a better health care? Well, it's important for, for us all to be reminded that we are governed by a manifesto. One, there's a social contract we've signed with our people. Two, the president has actually shared his agenda, his development agenda with parliament. And that has been okayed through the policy and budget statement. And so we're going according to plan. Uh, the, the impression to be created by the MPP that we have to do it their way and that things must be done now and all that. We are not that reckless. That's one of the things you have to know, that we are a different government altogether. If we wanted to go the way of the MPP, then the way they were rejected in 2008, we, we risk the, 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 we risk being rejected if we go their way. And so we are not prepared to go their way. The president is on course. If you look at the health sector alone, a lot of developments have been done. Look, go to Teshi alone and see what is being done in Teshi. Go to my own hospital, my own village in, in, in Aflao. You will see the kind of building that is coming up. Go to Winnibeg. See the government hospital that has been put up there. Look at the training institutions, the, the health training institutions. Uh, look at UDS having his own teaching hospital. Look at all the things that are happening within the health sector. The president is on course. The ambulances that are coming up, they are coming because we need to resource our health sector, even the roads. People are making the mistake of thinking that once, once you go on national health insurance, that's the end. That's the end of it. No, that's not the end of it. Even the kind of roads within our community can hinder service delivery. I mean, health service delivery. And so, all these roads that are coming up, all these feeder roads, all these um, uh, construction of roads in our villages, and the, even electricity, rural electrification into our villages, they are all necessary for health delivery. And so, we shouldn't create the impression that... And also that, the personnel that yes, we, even the personnel, we don't yes, seem even, to have in the Thank you very much. Even the so, personnel. what are you doing about that? No, you, you also understand that 
for instance, Cape Coast University, for instance, it's also, also coming up with their medical school. They've also started already. Mm -hmm. Legon has uh, is already been there. K University has been there. Uh, UDS has added up. And then the, the Cuban, Cuban, you know, uh, medical partnership. You know, partnership is also on course. And so that's how we're developing the human resource. And then the midwifery and the, the, the nurses training hospitals that are teaching hospitals that are coming up. There are a lot of, all over the place. I have been told that the, the, the National Communication Authority has been able to connect all of them to the internet, at least to, to some communication sort of, so that they can link up, do some research, be able to, to deliver okay. best. And so for me, there's a lot being done in the health sector. On the issue of computation, that is because we want to plug holes, the loopholes. If you remember, the National Health Insurance suffered a very, very huge setback in 2007 because people were taking advantage of the system. Atamu's government has promised austerity. He's promised that he was not going to, to leave the economy to be depleted by waste. And, and, and in that respect, we're making sure that that is cut off. Once the pilot is being done, I, I understand the pilot is being done in Ashanti at the moment. Once that is completed... Which has actually been uh, contested by the pharmaceutical well, society. You, 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 the truth of the matter is you can't please everybody. That's, that's it. Of course, there are policies. Once they are being implemented, there are bound to be challenges. And I'm expecting the okay. National Health Insurance to, to, to be able to come out with some other ways so that we can deal with the issue. Of course, um, I am solidly behind them for plugging the holes and making sure that we don't have waste in the system. Okay, Richard, um, the, the president in his State of the Nation touched on quite a number of things they are doing in the health sector. The ambulances that are going to be taking stock of, for instance, um, the government, the regional hospitals that are being upgraded to oh, well, these other are, these levels. Are, these are Isn't things that even military administrations do. It's like building a classroom block. There's nothing extraordinary about it. But if they you understand, promised it's, it's they were like, going to do my, my that, brother, and you it, said it, it is, deliver it on is, their it promises, is like, and it's like those ones are just and, and, and buying a food and say, mother, take a food and eat. It's nothing extraordinary. Okay. You understand? Let, let me continue with that. My brother was talking about rejudging the president based on the manifesto. You understand that? Indeed, everything that I've spoken about here is not something that I sat down and concocted. These are things that came from the president's own mouth. These are things that are written in colored in the, the NDC manifesto. You understand that? What I'm trying to let people to appreciate is that every single thing the president told us has been defiled. Do you understand that? You can talk about even the 100 days promises. He spoke about keeping Accra out of field. Within the 100 days, there was an epidemic, epidemic in Ghana. You know of it. Do you understand? Just recently, what happens? A whole world. I hope you're getting me. Okay. The children's world. If you are talking about it, there are a countless number. So we need you are looking move. at issues and solutions like free maternal care that mm -hmm. President Kufo brought in. Do you understand that? You are looking at implementing policies like the health insurance that President Kufo brought in. You are looking at thinking beyond, out of the, out, outside the box. Do you understand that? Okay. Not being so mediocre about your abilities and also because we don't really know Ghanaians to be like that. I hope you are getting me. Right. That's the point I'm I trying to put across here. Well made. Now let's uh, take our next video insert on the state of the energy sector and we'll be back to discuss that. Stay with us. 1,700 communities have been connected to the national grid. Oh, okay. 1,700 within three years from okay. 2009 okay. to 2011. Okay. 1,700 communities yep have been connected to the national grid. The aim is to extend electricity to 4,000 more communities, okay. covering all the regions in the country. Okay. I mean, if this goes on, mm. just like Otokuno said, mm. by 2015, the whole nation should be connected to the national grid. Great. And it's, it's evidence, Felix. Look at areas that didn't have street lights yeah. before. Yeah. The street lights all around. You remember the before there was a lot of doom so doom so. Yeah. They, they used to call it doom so doom yeah. so. It doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Some will argue that even now there's a, a, there's load shedding that the, the yeah. that the electricity company has yeah. reintroduced again. How yeah. do we convince our people that the load shedding is not a creation of government? But it is as a result of the number of um, communities we've connected onto the national grid. Mm -hmm. So a lot of communities are sharing the power that we were producing at the same time, even mm. though we've increased it. You know, there's a need for us to increase the number of you mm. know, megawatts. Mm. But, but, but Clarence, yeah. coming back to you, yeah. the, the grid code had indicated that Nigeria has shut down a major valve that supplies gas to the Suno yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the West uh, African gas Yeah, yeah the, the, uh, the yeah. power company. Yeah. I, I believe that a lot of our people, if you can explain the situation for our people to so really understand what is happening um, as regards the load shedding that is currently ongoing. Okay, um, Felix, let me take this opportunity to explain to you. Yeah. Um, the, we get some power from Nigeria. Yeah. 
So a some gas. Some, some gas. Yeah, for, sorry, some gas from Nigeria, yeah. which complements the one already to provide electricity to the to the country. And this supply has been shut from Nigeria, not by the doing of us, by their own internal wranglings yeah. in Nigeria. So it is it, it is not by any fault of the government. Mm -hmm. The government wouldn't want to see anybody sleep in darkness. Mm -hmm. It is by an external force. Thank you very much. You're welcome back. And uh, now we are delving straight into our discussion on energy. Let me begin with you this time around, Wanda. I'm looking at uh, portions of the NDC manifesto mm -hmm. and the energy, for instance, energy for growth. Um, it says the NDC government reacted decisively by taking the following measures. I'm just jumping straight to the point. Is it? Yes, the 2008 manifesto for a better Ghana. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the points is that yeah. is the construction and expansion of the Abuadze thermal plant, yeah. which, was currently at, which was then at 550 megawatts, yeah. uh, the development of a natural gas in the tunnel basin, and then also under the electricity subsector, you, you talk about, there's a talk about opening up the subsector to independent power producers and private sector participation in distribution. Yeah. What has happened to any of these since you came in? Particularly, let's start with the uh, sub, the electricity subsector, the uh, getting the independent power producers on board, and then also the private sector participation. Well, it's important to know that at the time when we made that promise, um, I, I don't want to say we were not in government, but we are confronted. We were on the verge of. Of course, of course. Okay. I mean, it's one thing being there; it's another thing, you know, being on making the plans of. to be there. Okay. Uh, we have President Kufo as a witness to, to witness some of this. He said he didn't know that <laughs> the challenges of government was this gangantua <laughs> at the time. And I'm sure that's a, for, for want of a better word. However, you will observe that when we came into office, projects like the Bui Power project is on course. Tiko, the Takradi uh, project is on course. The Pon one is also on course. The Tema Osano Power project is also on course. These are all very seriously capital capital intensive projects okay. and and Ooh, you and, get your chance and, and you you don't want to risk starting the project you can't finish and i've told you how meticulous the president is when it comes to some of these developments uh, with the backdrop of the fact that you have other projects that were going on like that Sogli project was a uh, was a private solely private uh, okay. uh, venture of course government has given us an, an his endorsement and uh, Things have come out better. I think they finished phase one now, they're on phase two and all that. So a lot of things are being done in that direction. However, I, I talked about funding earlier, and I, and I said that we don't want to put this country at the verge of a point where you start something you can't finish. When somebody has started something and you think that it is in the interest of the state to finish it up, I think it's fantastic to finish it up. And we should be congratulating the president that he's not staying extremely rigid to his manifesto at the peril of the Ghanaian. But the then peril is of the, the issue of the electricity, for instance. Yeah, Everybody the, is interested in electricity. Can I? Let me just and if you, let me if you, let, well, let, I will let you finish, yeah. but I'm just trying to make yeah. a point. that If you say you're going to get the private sector also involved, you're going yeah. to get independent power producers, yeah. then people are expecting and are hoping that, okay, at least once you were in for this four years, yeah. the, the electricity subsector would be flawless, if I can put it that way. The, 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 the point must be made mm. that for the three years that we've been in power, if not for anything at all, we have added 376 megawatts of power. We, we, we got about 1,800. And by the president projection by 2013, we should be able to add uh, at least, we should come up to about 3,300 3, uh, megawatts of power, which would have, you know, culminated, culminated into about 80% of And that is going power to be dependent solely on uh, now, hydro or... No. Hydro and thermal or what? Well, I, I, I understand there's thermal and understand there's hydro. And there are other sources, solar and all that are coming up. If you go to Ministry of Energy, for instance, you see a, a pilot testing program to see how viable our solar sources will be for energy. And so a lot of things are being done. Now, let, let's not also not create, let, let us also not create the impression that nothing is being done in the energy sector. Just because we said we we're going to bring Abuazi and that didn't happen, it means that nothing is happening. Go, go out there, you'll find out the, some of the things that are happening. Like my, my colleagues earlier said, about 1,700 communities connected to the national grid. Granted that, yes, a community is 500 people. Much like that, you get about 8, 8, 8, 850,000 people connected to the national grid. So you will see that a lot of things are happening within the power sector. 
Now, let's so not... You've had, let's, to, let's, you've had to shield your original plans. We're not shielding our original plans. We're doing it at the expense of the ordinary Ghanaian who needs power today. Not, at ex not, 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 not behaving in a way that we just want to satisfy our manifesto promise. Because Ghanaians are not only made of M NDC. We have NDC, MBB, and we have every... There are a lot of people out there who are even more than... NDC has only a followership, followership of about 4 million people, and we are 25 million, for God's sake. So you, you can see the number of people who need power out there. Not because NDC has promised, but because it's in the national interest to do what we are supposed to do. So we're okay. following the programs as, 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 as and when... Okay. It, it will, Richard, it will I'll let you get your chance, but yeah. I wanted to make an intervention. Yeah. Uh, brother, I think it appears the information put forward by my brother is far from the truth. It appears that uh, it also falls in line with the same uh, turning cow, cow, cow into sheep and also goat into elephant and tiger into uh, lion and all those things. And I think that's exactly what's happened uh, during the State of the Nation address. So the President talked about the fact that 376 megawatts of power has been added to the national grid. And indeed, nobody has been able to ask the president, where are these plants located? Do you understand that? Let me break this thing down. We know that Tiko Tre, which is the Abuazi, which was being, uh, which the NDC, MPP government source finance from uh, the Canadian government. Do you understand that? NDC came and it was approved at Parliament. Do you understand that? That one, as, at, as, as I speak, do you understand that? What has been added is 136. Do you understand, Megawatt? Mm -hmm. That has been added to it. I hope you're getting me. The other ones that MPP also brought in, which were also being constructed, some of them are at the various stages of construction. You can talk about the pump, which was going to add uh, 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 220 megawatts. You understand that, which also by the M MPP has been stopped, even as I speak now, by the NDC. I hope you're getting me. We can talk about Tico 2, which is, or T2, which would also add 110 megawatts. That one too, the issue, the, the, the construction has been stopped because there were certain allegations about somebody wanting to forget, uh, this in, uh, take some $1 million or so. So the issue is even at the courts. Uh, beyond the shores of this country and all that, which is being, uh, being fought to make sure at least they brought some sanity into the whole system. There's what you call the Osono power plant. Mm -hmm. I hope you're getting me. That one too has been taken over by SNIT and they are continue. All these things were some of the power plants that NPP administration through the able leadership of President John Jekun Kufo brought into. They understand that. We can talk about numerous sort of aspects of this. You can look at the buoy which was going to add 400 megawatts, which was also something President Kufo did and brought the Chinese to help at the cost of $800 million. has been dollars. on the drawing board for quite a long time. I'm talking time. about it, the drawing board can be on. That's what the NDC believe in. Far, plans are far advanced, drawing board. Those things can be on the drawing board. However, if you don't put particular steps to make sure that it's started. So NPP procured the funds, awarded a contract, and now they are at various points of completion. They understand? We are talking about the buoy, which I know you know of, and I know my brother will not contest that. I hope you are getting me. You can talk about a 120 uh, mobile units, which the NDC term it as toy, whatever it is, which the MPP also brought in to augment the uh, power strategy that we were having in the system. We can also talk about several uh, other aspects of it. I hope you are getting me. If nothing at all, you know of the oil discovery which the uh, President Kufo, through his able leadership, was able to discover. During, before Kufo came into power, what uh, GMPC was doing those times was the looking for... Yeah, they were not even doing explorations. They were just into cocoa, banana, and other sort of things, not really concentrating on their core mandate of looking for oil or exploring oil. So if that was so what we were doing, how come then they were able to... I'm talking about them? before Kufo came into power. So okay. when President Kufo came to power, he said, no, you have to seize all this. Let's concentrate on this. And customers and other companies were brought in. That's why we were able to discover this oil. But yeah. see, the whole amazing aspect of what is happening currently is that now people are even creating confusion out of such a wonderful gift that God has blessed us with. Now when you go to the, the, the area where this discovery were made, that there's a huge confusion. Do you understand that? Because you know of the fact that 
people and the president and his team will go and negotiate with the farmers and the good people of uh, this thing. Bonri, talk about that. Okay, we want A, B, C, D land. Mm. Give us this land. Procure the land. Okay. We are going to use it for this project. Then all of a sudden, they move the project from there. I hope you're getting me. And now we are being told that they are going to pay compensation. This is causing financial loss to the state. Right. Okay. We let want me, people who have hands on solutions to the problems of the Ghanaian. I hope you're getting me. You, you see, there, there's always that tendency to create the impression that President Buford discovered oil and so what? That's the question. He discovered I'm sure oil. Ghanians you know will forgive you do you for, know for how saying many, that. Do you know how many oil fields I'm, I'm that sure have been discovered Ghanians, since then? Four more oil fields have been discovered, bigger than what President Buford discovered. I'm saying that Ghanians will not and forgive you. And he should agree. Okay, so he must agree. Can, he must come to, the, than he must come to terms with the fact, with the truth, and that they discovered oil. Can you discover allow him Please, let's be a bit cautious on this issue. Four more oil fields have been discovered. You talk about Banda, you talk about Nyire, you talk about Sankofa, and then you talk about Tik2. In fact, Tik2 is one of the biggest because that one has condensed gas and natural gas. It has a lot of you know things that are coming with it. So to create the impression that you've discovered, you've discovered so what? Do you know how many countries have discovered oil and it became a, a curse with them rather than a blessing? You should be so praise, so praising President Mills at come. least. For not doing something untoward like we did, that was done in the past, and I'm very sure but that shouldn't also had, the former president be commended. Well, haven't we commended him enough? We have, so and we have moved away from that. We, we move but away yes, from we as Ghanaians, it's, it's, it's a property. You, you no, it's a property of Ghanaians, and really we're supposed to look at it move away that. from the fact that oh, somebody has discovered. Okay. You discovered I have my first caller on the line, Mohammed. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yes, go ahead with your comments and keep it brief for us. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to Yeah, go ahead. For the um, this is the first time. But I want to... Uh, Mohamed, if you can position yourself... I'm going to direct you guys to the fact and let the whole Ghanaians know that the good president of this country, the, the Fifikote, is doing well. All the systems, the, 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 the health sector is doing well. The energy sector... Mohammed, I'm sorry, but your line is really terrible. We can hardly hear you. Uh, we'll go to our next caller. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, welcome. Your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, uh, I'm calling from. I'm calling from Somaya. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I want to give my small comments. And the NDC man said they wish to do a plenty promise what they said. And even Somania secondary school right now, the children are worried about the water. They, did, they didn't open water for them. They need some boreholes so that they, they can wish to milk them above side. Okay. All right. Thank you very mm. much. Thank you very much. Uh, let me go to my next caller. Hello. Hello. Good evening and welcome to the show. Your name? My name is Asamoa. Asamoa, you're calling from? Calling from Afin Kusu. Okay, go ahead with your comment and make it brief. Now, what I want to contribute is that uh, NDC, they should give us a break. They have nothing to offer Ghanaians. Look at what is going on in their country. Whoops, sorry, we lost that somewhere over there. Uh, so I guess we'll come back to the studio at least until... of the frustrations of the, 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 the president and no, his administration. No. <laughs> yes, uh, let him finish what you were saying. Let him finish the comment he was yeah, making because be he was making a point when the caller uh, And I'm saying that, I'm saying that a lot of five more fields, of, uh, oil fields have been discovered. Mm. Now he's talking about the project, the gas uh, project. The truth of the matter is simple. And I need the news to appreciate what the president is doing. The fact is that okay. we are all aware let me catch you again. Kweku yeah. is on the line. Hello. Good evening, Kweku. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, welcome to the show and your comments. Yeah. Keep it brief. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'd like to you know, give a little comment about the discussion. Sure, go ahead. I want to recommend you guys for the good job you are doing. Thank you. Yeah, I think that you are all doing well. But I want to tell the MPP guy that you should you know, speak with facts so that at the, at the end of the day, we those listening will also get the information. Okay. But I realize that he's always he just talking without speaking the fact. Okay. Come up with the fact. Let's discuss the fact. No, so that the listeners can get the information very well. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Kuku. Uh, let's go now to Kwame. Hello, Kwame. Good evening. 
Yes, good evening. Yes, Kwame, you're welcome to the show. Yes, I'm happy to be on your... Uh, and we are glad to have you on the other end. Uh, so go ahead with your comment. Yes, yeah. um, I don't know what is going on right now in Ghana. Look, if you look on the television, on the television, continue to die. Look, I'm going through the not. Look at the hardship people are going through. Look at the how people are going And yet, they come on tele, and, and talk as if everything is well with my hands. My brother, I'm an HND student. I'm not finished to the fight. I've been put in the I'm still in the house. The people in the castle, they all put the boots on the other side. They come and they just talk as if all is well with them. People are suffering and we are here to fight. I'm telling you. Okay. Right. Th thank you very much, uh, Kwame, for your call. Now let's move on to Bright. Hello, good evening, Bright, and welcome to the show. Good uh, evening, my brother. I'm calling from Ho in the voter region. Okay. Welcome. You know, at times, my NDC friends, they talk as if they are living in another planet. <laughs> you see, if you don't have anything to say, that is why you come and tell people you are building classrooms. My brother, if a two year boy become a president of Ghana today, that child of yours will build a classroom. Look, that, 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 my brother is saying that they are building roads. Where are the roads? They are not doing anything. And you know, they are just doing intellectual dishonesty, thinking that people are not aware of what is happening on the ground. People cannot pay school fees. My, uh, the president said they are coming to put money in the pocket of the ordinary person. My brother, look at the condition of you yourself, the host today. I'm not saying you should make a comment. And then look at what is happening in the country now before they are just galloping <laughs> that all is well, throwing their hands in despair, doing nothing. Okay. We are saying that we are coming and we are coming to make secondary school free. The right. money they are throwing away alone can make secondary school free. In Thank you very country. much, Bright. Uh, we'll have to take our very last call. Hello, good evening. Hello, Your name yes. and where you're calling yes. from? I'm calling from Awush. My name is Jose Kofi. Okay, Jose Kofi, go ahead. Uh, this election, we need true and fat. But the energy, energy sector, the only thing I know in the comfort time that they uh, approved 300 million dollars in Parliament 2008. That time, when the NDC comes, they implement it and do their uh, uh, specific, uh, different. They implement and uh, implement it, but now they fund energy. They fund different uh, oil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, we know all the things that we, we have tried. We are we need critical thinking now. Okay. All right. We need critical thinking. We don't we don't want any different lie and. Uh, Okay. Thank you very much, Jose. I think you, you've made your point. Uh, now we have just about a minute or two to wrap up. So I I I'll no give problem. you a minute each. I think uh, that's, the program's coming to an end. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So a minute so each. What, I'll say, your final what, what I'll say is that Ghanaians are suffering. The hardship, the difficulties. People cannot even afford to a meal a day. You understand me? When you go to the hinterlands, the villages, look at the frustration and go to Makola. You see our sisters and brothers and other individuals sleeping on the street. People are being carried away by rains and all that. The president promise of giving us STS housing that has fallen flat on his face. They understand that. Everything the president told us has become a nightmare. They understand. If people want to appreciate the fact that there are a lot of inconsistencies about even the president's state of the nation address, what people can look at is that we were told by the president that for the first time in our history, under his regime, President Atta Mills, Ghana was rated 14 in the FIFA ranking, which turns out to be a palpable force. Do you understand that? Ghana was rated 14 in 2008. It okay. never happened under its administration. So to put everything together, what we can say is that Ghanaians are tired of the, the confusion and also the fact that the president and his team are busy sharing our okay. money among themselves. Do you understand Your that? one minute is up. 
So, so what I promise Ghanaians is that they should mm -hmm. look out to Nana Kufuad. They should vote for Nana Kufuad and also go in their numbers and, and, and register. I hope you get him. That is the most important thing. Thank when you. you go do um, your registration well, and that. when you it's, do that, you go and vote for Nana Kufuad. You, you, you don't need Thank to you. sweat to get Nana <laughs> to be. To Wonder, be to your one minute has already started. Yes. So. The truth of the matter is simple mm -hmm. and I want Ghanaians to bear with President Rose. We are committed yeah, to their cause. Right. We are committed to the cause of the ordinary. We know the class of the MPP. They believe in the, the upper class. They believe in the elite. They mm -hmm. believe in satisfying the few privileged out there, those in the plush houses in, in, in some environments. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see that all they have is women. They have forgotten the many promises that they made to Ghanaians in their manifesto and field. Page 5, we provide jobs for everybody. Nothing happened by the time they were leaving. You just 50 to 30 to 50 about billion. About 30 to 50 <laughs> billion <laughs> investment. <laughs> Nothing happened to that. Bauxite and stone quarry uh, development, nothing happened to that. Tourist sector development, nothing happened to that. Fitting shops to be changed into mechanical, whatever, mm. uh, first class shop, nothing happened to that. Yeah. They said they were going to give us real wheels. They went for the, the, the 750 euro bond, nothing happened to that. We saw okay, uh, what happened to teachers. We, to a lot of things money. happened under their tenure, so they should keep quiet really and watch a real government yeah, yeah. do its yeah, business yeah, and do its job. Atamus is the place. best man for the moment, and I entreat the news oh, to just vote for him when the time comes.